You saw me fly 60 kerbals on an SSTO to Elu and back without mining, and then you saw me fly 124 kerbals to Lath and back via an SSTO, again without mining. Well today my friends is a very exciting day, for today we will be flying 2 kerbals to Gilly and back, which on reflection is not as impressive on any level. But it's a fun mission nonetheless and sometimes I like to make small aircraft because they're more fun to fly and they generally look better and this is this one, the Gilly Phantom. As opposed to my Mark III SSTOs and beyond it is very easy to fly, so much so that I'm basically skipping through the entire ascent, though very quickly. We're pitching up very gradually so the rapiers can build up enough speed to get to 400 meters per second before lowering our nose even more to around 10 degrees just to try and get as much speed on the air breathing mode of the rapiers as possible. There we go firing up the nuclear engines around 21 kilometers up and now we can just fire up the closed cycle mode of the rapiers to complete our ascent getting our apoapsis to about 88,000 meters. More than enough height to circularize using the nuclear engines which have terrible thrust to weight ratio so you do need quite a big window in which to complete your circularization and there go the solar panels and communications aerials we don't really need two of each but i'm just a sucker for symmetry so what can you do so we are just finishing off our circularization as i'm sure you can see we do have more crew capacity than what we're using this thing can support six kerbals if necessary however i kind of wanted this to be somewhat realistic in the sense that you know Jeb and Bill, they need their space, you know? They've got their little crew cabins and storage space in that other crew module there, so they've got a bit of space to move around, so, you know, we didn't want it to be too cramped. Here we are, getting our EVE transfer window set up. As I'm sure you can see, I kind of set this up before launching the mission, so we'd be able to get an EVE encounter without having to do any uh, time warping in orbit and here we are just pumping fuel so if you look at the top right of the screen ish where that arrow is pointing uh, you can see our total delta v there we were just pumping fuel from the big s delta wings and the uh, peripheral fuel tanks into the main fuselage where the fuel lines are uh, just so we can get a true delta v reading on that read out there and then we are just doing our burn to escape from Kerbin. so it would have been more efficient to do multiple burns at periapsis however I have enough fuel so it didn't really matter too much and there's a little cheeky money counter there. Now for those who would like a tutorial on visiting Gilly, I would highly recommend the video I made a while back called Low Tech to Gilly. It's basically designed as a tutorial for people that have never done Gilly missions before because whilst this is still not that difficult to mission, it is much harder in the fact that it's done with an SSTO. So I'd recommend that first. Here we are getting our EVE encounter. Basically, if you pan the camera down and make it so Gilly's orbit is basically a single line, you want your periapsis to lie perfectly along that line that is Gilly's orbit if that makes sense and you want your periapsis to be as close to Eve's surface as possible and since Eve's atmosphere extends to 90,000 meters you want it to be just above that so there we are setting a maneuver node to get us an encounter with a periapsis of 95,000 meters but uh, you don't worry if you don't get that close but uh, you want to be as close as possible because that's using the O-Birth effect which you can google if you'd like to know more. <laughs> So while this craft is called the Gilly Phantom, it is by no means limited to Gilly missions. It obviously goes without saying that it can easily do Minmus return since Minmus requires negligible amounts of fuel, but it can also easily do Mun landings and it can do Juna as well. I always said if you can go to the Mun, then that same rocket can go to Gilly. It requires a surprisingly small amount of Delta V to perform missions too, but it can be difficult to encounter because it has a very small gravity well, so in this video and in my low tech to Gilly video I will be showing you how to easily get a ghillie encounter in fact spoiler alert I do a, a pretty shocking effort in this video so if you want a better one then check out the low tech to ghillie but sometimes it's nice to see missions that don't go perfectly because this is the real world obviously not all the missions we do will go perfectly so you know you know so the more eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that my actual periapsis for circularizing around eve is 196,000 meters because I didn't do my maneuver no particularly well but doesn't really matter too much, we're just expending a little bit of fuel to get ourselves circularised. Yes, I probably could have aero braked to save on fuel, but A, that's kind of, I feels like a bit, a little bit unrealistic even though I have done that before. I kind of wanted to show that you can do this purely on engines and well, actually that's probably it. And obviously we have enough Delta V. So basically, once to get to Gilly, you burn at Periapsis Eve till you're just captured and then immediately stopped then time warp up to apoapsis and circularize. You want to basically bring your periapsis to intersect with Gilly's orbit. So you can watch this here. 
Uh, there we go. You can see I didn't actually do a very good job of this because my periapsis is actually slightly above Gilly's orbit if I just pan the camera down there. So I had to make a second manoeuvre node there, expending about 15 metres per second of delta V. So a very small amount of fuel uh, just to get our encounter set up. So what we'll do is we'll just perform that correction there. So we, our manoeuvre is all set up so we can just warp there. Although sometimes it's a good idea to set up your uh, manoeuvre node heading before initiating time warp, just so you have to do less faffing. In case like me, you often overshoot manoeuvre nodes, but uh, there we are, three, two, one, and there we go, overshot by 10 seconds, so it's not a big deal. So uh, yeah, ended up using a little bit more than 15 metres per second of fuel, but given that we still have about 2,000 metres per second left, it's not a big deal. So now we have the orbit we wanted to do, obviously we're on an escape trajectory, but it's not a problem. You create a manoeuvre node at the point where your orbit crosses Gilly's orbit, and play around with either retrograde or prograde, until you get an encounter show up. So so when you do initiate your burn, you do have to be careful. You can see mine is about 13 meters per second, which is a small burn anyway, and it's really not uncommon for it to be a small burn. You really want to be careful not to overshoot because Gilly's gravity well is so tiny, it's incredibly easy to overshoot your burn. So you can see here, just making a maneuver node to circularize. You can see how little it takes. I overshot twice creating that node. It may even be worth deactivating one of the nuclear engines and lowering its thrust limiter just to do you know, more fine-tuned burns and things like that. I do employ that strategy quite a lot in some of my videos, and I actually do it later in this video when I'm getting my Kerbin periapsis set up. But here we are creating our manoeuvre node. Now, obviously, it's about 350 metres per second, which is not an insignificantly sized burn. What you'll find is a lot of that burn will be spent basically getting into a stable gilly orbit once your apoapsis appears on the map screen it's going to shoot down really really fast because like we've already established gilly has an absolutely tiny mass so well we can you can you can see for yourself so <laughs> we are just initiating our burn here for those of you that might not know the way i pick when to start burning is you want to start your burn when your time to the maneuver node is half the amount of time the burn will take for example, a 30 second burn, you should start burning about 15 seconds before it. Now this isn't the most efficient way of burning it, you could calculate it properly because obviously you have to account for things like as your fuel gets spent, your ship gets lighter and things like that, but it's a good sort of rough guideline to follow and it works pretty well for me. Um, yeah, there you are, so we ended up circularizing but then I just decided to uh, screw it and just immediately lower our trajectory to encounter the surface. Now, you can see us coming in, I've sped up this footage quite a bit, but here we are just free falling, barely even reaching 14 meters per second, which gives you an idea of how low Gilly's surface gravity is. You can see me not even giving full thrust to the nuclear engines and uh, we're just drifting down very slowly. I've always liked uh, the way landing on Gilly is likened to docking. It is basically like that. You wanna get your velocity as low as possible before touching down, otherwise you'll just bounce away. So uh, you can see me kind of doing that here, but uh, you can help anchor yourself to the ground by just initiating some time warp, not physical time warp, real time warp. And there we are, just deploying the service bay. Actually, you might have seen me deploy it earlier. That was just me grabbing a potential thumbnail image for the video. I don't know if I'll end up using that, but you know, that's what that was. And here we are, we can deploy Bob Kerman. The reason I use Bob is so he can do the science experiments on EVA. I I know it doesn't technically matter, but from a cinematic standpoint, it looks cooler if a Kerbal is actually the one doing the science. And actually, this is all symbolic because we're on a sandbox save, so you don't get any science points. And there we go! We can right click and observe. And there we are, LootCrate.com sponsored this video! This video doesn't have an unboxing, actually, I just kind of included that as a joke because I really wanted to get something off my chest that's been bothering me for a really long time, so allow me to just divulge for a second. Being sponsored by Loot Crate does not make me a sellout. The problem is that that accusation presupposes a set of principles that I don't actually hold. I've never once said that YouTubers shouldn't accept sponsorships from Loot Crate or any other company, or that we should exclusively operate and earn money from the Google AdSense platform. Really, I'm just doing a job while at the same time hopefully providing entertainment for you all. Like I say, selling out is going against one's principles for monetary gain, which is not what getting a Loot Crate sponsorship is, it just helps to fund production and equipment and and just help facilitate me improving the overall quality of my channel and this applies to everyone that gets sponsored by Loot Crate which is why I don't understand why people comment saying that Loot Crate is ruining YouTube when really it's the exact opposite they're helping content creators to you know carry on producing content that you guys can watch for free this is in a world where ad blockers are so prevalent that 
you know, it's how YouTubers make most of their money. You don't see tennis players or golfers getting called sellouts or being sponsored by Nike, even though it is essentially the exact same thing. You know, it's just kind of a thing that's bothered me for a while. But I know it's a vast minority of you, which is why I'm not staying on this topic too long. And so with that, let's move on. You can see me here leaving Gilly using barely any thrust from the nuclear engines and our apoapsis is soaring up and don't forget that these are the nuclear engines which have the worst thrust to weight ratio as I have mentioned in pretty much every other SSTO video I've done that involved nuclear engines in some way which on reflection is pretty much all of my SSTO videos. And now we can activate Time Warp and Fly Away. I would highly recommend getting the mod Time Control for Gilly missions just because Kerbal Space Program has this uh, warp limiter where you can't time warp at a certain distance from a planet or celestial body surface uh, to, to help you stop crashing into it. But for Gilly, that means that you have to spend a painful amount of time using physical time warp to get away from it. Here we are actually getting very quickly ahead of ourselves. We are... I'm basically trying to get a transfer window back to Kerbin. I could use transfer window planner, it is installed, but I find this way just not necessarily easier, but this is just the lazy way of doing it. I just keep on time warping until I can get an encounter that looks good. So here we are, setting up our node. This is a very inefficient burn, by the way. This is just me at the moment seeing if I can get an encounter before actually executing the burn, because we're not going to be burning from this particular orbit around Eve that we're doing at the moment. As you can see, our current, in our current state, it'll take a burn of around 750 meters per second to get back home. But we can do better, so... Here we are performing a maneuver that might seem a little bit counterintuitive. We're actually going to be burning at apoapsis and lowering our periapsis to the common line of Eve. Well, I'm going to aim for about 95 kilometers above sea level just to give us a little bit of clearance above the atmosphere. But we're effectively slowing ourselves down. And the reason for this is that it's much more efficient to burn, uh, to perform our interplanetary transfer burn as close to Eve periapsis as possible because we'll be using the Oberth effect, which just increases our overall efficiency. And as I mentioned earlier, it would have cost us about 750. 50 meters per second to perform our burn to get to Kerbin, whereas by doing it this way, we're going to be spent a little bit of fuel to get ourselves down, and then our actual ejection burn is only going to be 125 meters per second, so we are saving quite a bit of fuel doing it this way. But um, that's that, so here we are just connecting our burn. I did touch upon that topic again a little bit more detail in my low tech to Gilly video, which functions slightly more like a tutorial than this video here, which I guess does touch upon key aspects of the mission, but is really more a showcase of the aircraft itself and I just kind of wanted to make a smaller aircraft you know I've done two really big ones recently and they just can be a bit of a pain in the ass to fly and I kind of wanted to just do a nice easy mission that's just relaxing and fun to do so and I think it looks quite cool and I haven't really visited my phantom line of spacecraft for a while all of my SSTOs including how the classifications work and all the specifications of them can be found in the video description which links to my forum post. And here we are creating a maneuver node to get our final Kerbin encounter. We can actually do this through air braking since we're only coming from Eve, so our speed is gonna be relatively low. And given that we only have about 1.1 kilometers per second of Delta V left, we are pushing it a little bit in terms of how much fuel we, we've got left over, especially now this burn's gonna cost us almost 200 meters per second further. So, you know, we may as well save a little bit of fuel while we can, so. Here we are setting up our maneuver node. We'll have to do a little bit of tweaking when we first encounter Kerbin, but here we are. There goes our periapsis, and you'll see me uh, accidentally use the wrong uh, nodes there. I should be using radial in and radial out, but I was accidentally using normal and anti-normal. You can see me change the camera angle there and realize what I was doing, so I quickly tried to normalize it again, and then pointed myself radial out, overshooting massively. So what I did was shut down one of the engines and reduce the thrust of one of them to uh, a fraction of what it normally would be to give me some enhanced accuracy with the burn uh, before obviously activating them both again and then we can just time warp until we get to Kerbin and then um, well then we can get to finishing off this mission so our final Kerbin encounter will be roughly equatorial it won't be perfect but it's close enough for it to not really be an issue I have covered in a Juno SS2 tutorial I'm sure if you just uh, search on the YouTube bar you know, Matt Lown, Junior SS2 tutorial, it will probably come up <laughs> how to uh, encounter the runway from a completely 45 degree angle orbit using no fuel expenditure apart from obviously our initial deorbit burn, but that's like, what, 50 meters per second at best, so it doesn't really matter too much. We're doing some final tweaking to our periapsis there, bringing it to about 50,000 meters before bracing for re-entry. Now my bigger SSTOs were coming in, like my lathe SSTO and my ELO SSTO are the most notable examples. We'd be coming in, we'd, we'd start doing a big spin straight away using Q&E, 
However, we're only coming in at 3.5 kilometers a second, which is fast, but it's not fast enough to really cause too much of a threat to this thing, although I would still recommend quick saving before you enter the atmosphere, just in case anything goes wrong. But we are going to do a few flips here, just to help dissipate the heat a bit, but also just to increase our drag slightly and help force our apoapsis down a little bit faster. So yeah, I did, I did say earlier that this thing probably can survive this kind of re-entry, although we do have we did have quite a few alarmingly red temperature gauges showing up, so it wasn't too much of a problem, but for just for transparency sake, this is played at 100% re-entry heating, just in case you were wondering, so there is no tomfoolery here playing with the difficulty settings. Now we're captured, our re-entry speed is much slower, so I'm not really too worried at all. You will notice, however, that we do still have a small tendency to flip, and that's probably just because A, we're coming in quite fast in a rather uncontrollable manner, but it also could be that this thing has got a little bit too much weight at the back because we do still have just over 700 units of liquid fuel left. So what a little trick we can do just to help keep this thing stable when we do re-enter for the final time is we can just pump some of the fuel into the front, uh, they're like the, the two intake tanks and obviously the main Mark II fuselage behind the cargo bay just to help bring our centre of mass forward. As a great man once said, a front heavy plane flies poorly, but a rear heavy plane flies once. So, you want to get your centre of mass as far forward as possible when doing your re-entry. And here we are, uh, heading for the KSC. Now I did realise at this point I was going to overshoot, so I kind of started doing kind of a few rolls and spins to try and induce as much drag as possible, but it ultimately wasn't too much of a concern because of the aforementioned 700 units of liquid fuel remaining. Coupled with the fact we can use the rapiers in air breathing mode, which are while they're the most inefficient air breathing engine in the game, they are still air breathing, which means they are leagues more efficient than any of the traditional rocket engines in the game. So it wasn't really a problem. We're only using two rapiers because, again, we're not really needing to pick up any high speeds. We just need to nurse this thing home. So there's no point using all four engines, so we can just use the two. And now the runway is in sight, and this video is therefore coming to its conclusion, so we can deploy the landing gear and activate the brakes before performing a graceful touchdown. And in fact, I can say that unironically this time, almost. I did skid a little bit there, because a lot of the time my touchdowns are abysmal. But regardless, I do hope you enjoyed this video. There are some links on screen now. So top left is Low Tech to Gilly, which I mentioned a few times in this video. It's just a more tutorial-y type of video of how to get to Gilly. Top right is a 124 seat Leith SSTO and bottom right is a 60 seat Elu SSTO. So other than that I hope you enjoyed. Craft files and all that in the description and goodbye.